Things are uh, certainly rolling along. Uh, happy with that I'm getting uh, comments. I don't mind negative comments. It's good to have negative comments sometimes uh, because they that's how you spur on discussion. You don't know nobody always has to agree with what you see as the truth and, and, and what you understand. Uh, and this is the whole point of discussion. The whole point of discussion is to bring out new views to really sort of try things out and see how things fit. So this one person here uh, says Neo soon to be retro. Uh, I have no idea who I'm assuming she because uh, her site looks like more of a girl's site than it is than a guy's site. There are typical differences between genders in terms of how the sites are uh, or, or channels are laid out. Uh, and this seems to be more on um, the uh, feminine side of things than on the masculine side of things, but you never can tell. Uh, she uh, wrote and said, "I'm not sure you're. I'm not sure you're fully aware of what it means to be Freudian. Uh, first, Freudian behavior is not relegated to uh, men, but just but women as well. Second, Freudian behavior has nothing to do with the friend zone." Uh, it's inherently not it's not inherently selfish to be Freudian, but sexual frustration is likely occur, likely to occur according to Freud. Um, I think you need to do some more research on Freud. In other words, she's questioning uh, and rightly so questioning my position and understanding of Freud. And so, as a disclaimer here, as I said, I am a research channel. Uh, this is a research channel. I am a researcher. Uh, I've been doing this type of research for more than 20 years, uh, so uh, my knowledge of Freud is rather extensive. Uh, it's not from the point of view of, of, of standard psychology. Uh, what people need to understand is that there's two views in the world. Uh, there is the publicly seen view, and then there is a non-public view uh, that is hidden around. And anyone who understands and knows about Tesla uh, understands this, that there are two views to uh, <laughs> various different topics. Uh, I'll give you a reason to get an example of why. Is that uh, Freudian has two uses. It has a public um, psychotherapy use, but it also has a secondary use and that's in the use of uh, psychological warfare. And psychological warfare has been practiced in the United States uh, uh, since 1945, since the beginning of the Cold War, and has been uh, been growing ever since. In other words, uh, psychological warfare has now become a staple. And psychological warfare is not something new, it's something that's been, that's been practiced for a long time now. And you can see this, and this is where Freud does come in, in terms of, uh, of Freud's relationship to sexuality. And Freud wrote in terms that goes back to what they call the primitive man and primitive behavior, your primary urges. And one of the most primary urges that Freud has alluded to, this is why Freud it can be viewed as, and Freud it can be viewed as a sexual uh, theory of psychology, uh, and most we, most psychologists, most psychology uh, really stems from Freud. Freud is known as the father of, uh, of uh, uh, psychoanalysis. And it's not for, by accident. He really did an enormous amount of work in there. But his work boiled down to one essential essence. And that means, and that is that man, I'm talking not about man the gender, I'm talking about man the species. For those of you who under, don't understand, when you're talking generally about man, you're talking about man, the, the species, not the gender, and so he refers to both he and she. It's, it's a genderless, uh, it's a genderless reference. Uh, so man uh, is primarily sexual. In other words, all the motivation, everything you do in life, has some sexual reason or cause for. It. And this is why in schools and in many many different uh, uh, 
avenues you'll hear, t hear people talking about that we are sexual beings. Well, this origin of sexual being uh, comes from Freud. It's, it's, it's a Freudian origin. And so what happens is because Freud is fundamentally sexual in terms of its na in terms of the Freudian nature of man is fundamentally sexual. You can use Freud and Freudian behavior as a substitute. For, and you don't want to keep saying sexual all the time. And you want to be make it uh, you know somewhat more PG. You can use the term Freudian in the term in, in, in replace of the in, 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 to replace the term sexual. And that's what I've been trying to do. I'm trying to make this more PG in case some kids come across this. Uh, instead of using the term sexual, I'm going to be using the term Freudian. And this brings it back to its psychological origin and the given example of how Freudian is used uh, in this understanding is that you need to understand that um, uh, if you look at what's going on in the wars of Africa, uh, you see how uh, you have these mass rapes and so on and so forth. Well, that's a Freudian technique. That's part of Freudian psychological warfare, is that because it, 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 sex can be used as a weapon. And this is what, this is what, this is, this is the whole thing about sex, uh, about, uh, about uh, psychological warfare. And I have, uh, you know, an extensive amount of experience and research into psychological warfare. Uh, it is an insidious, a very nasty, way of do, conducting war. But the views of those who created this, this type of war, and this includes Timothy Leary, who, uh, for many of you, if, you, if you don't know, his entire program, including the, uh, the 60s sexual revolution, uh, that, that, which was primarily Freudian, uh, was funded by the CIA. Timothy Leary was a CIA operative. He was embedded with the CIA. His entire funding, and this is what, if you're a researcher at a public university uh, and you're doing anything in psychology, uh, science, or whatever it is, more often than not, your funding is coming from the military. And there is no way that a researcher who is up at that level doesn't know this. They know they're working with the military. They know they have top secret clearance. They're just simply not telling the people they're experimenting on. And this public experimentation by the CIA, by these different uh, military organizations, including these psychologists, and many of the, psycho the psychological and psychiatric institutions, were, up until the late 80s, ex experimenting on people. They're still experimenting on people. And this has been brought out, not just by uh, uh, fringe groups, but it's been in National Geographic, it's been on the BBC, there have been documentaries exposing this, and this includes uh, giving in creating LSD. LSD didn't, didn't come out of this ragtag uh, 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 outlaw lab. It came out of the CIA. It came out of the universities. Most of the drug culture that uh, emerged in the 1960s came out of the CIA. It was part of the CIA psychological experiments and psychological warfare. So, you know, what happens is if, if you haven't gone this far and studied psychological warfare, then you've only seen the public view of Freud. It's not until you get into the hidden view of Freud, the psychological warfare view of Freud, that you understand that Freud is fundamentally sexual. And talk about his theories. I'm not talking about him, the person. Because <laughs> you can. Yeah, so I said, we're talking about how Freud is really a sexual, sexual, the sexually oriented uh, theory of, um, of, psycho of, of psychoanalysis, of psychology. And I said, Freud can really be identified. He is, he is so, so tightly connected with psychology in terms of that he is the base of all psycho psychological theory that you can say that, that psychology is Freud. So whenever I say Freud, I'm actually not talking about the person, I'm talking about the, um, the theory, the, 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 his psychological theory. And the thing is, if you haven't seen the military aspects of Freud, in other words, you haven't seen 
uh, the, and gone into the understandings of psychological warfare, then you've only seen the public part of Freud. You actually haven't seen uh, Freud in reality. And you haven't seen the Freud, what sort of, what the underlying components are of Freud uh, and Freudian psychology. Uh, and this is where this is where I'm, I'm trying to get into this a little bit, but it, it, it's a long process. And the reason why it's a long process is that we're going f in in these videos and this research here, we're going from the Freudian research, showing where the Freudian research is inherently flawed, and then eventually showing that there, it can be replaced by new. Uh, psychology called quantum psychology, which is based on quantum physics and observation rather than by theoretical understanding. In other words, Freud and for, the, the Freudian theories that evolved from there uh, were all intellectually based. They were done inside the mind and things, and then this is the way classical science was, everything conformed to intellectual thought. Uh, quantum physics and modern uh, physics uh, which is quantum physics itself, actually, uh, has demonstrated that the mind is limited and that there are certain aspects of uh, the world, the universe, that cannot be explained and dealt with with a human mind, but, can, but must be accepted because we're observing. In other words, we go from, in, uh, from, from a classical science, which is, which is theoretical, to, in quantum physics, to an observational science. And now, and the thing is, in observational science, uh, it's not that, that all of classical science was wrong. It's just that what happens is that you can't extend the thoughts and theories of classical science to the extent that they assume that they were, that they should be uh, uh, extended to. And this uh, this can actually be shown in, by observation in quantum psychology, in any quantum field, any in any that you want. Because now I'm taking quantum physics and applying it further outwards. Uh, that this quantum reality, this observational reality, should be shown, and, and, and you, you can show it in the functional limit, limitations of Freudian theory. So take Freudian theory, go there, break it down to its essence, and find out observationally where was Freud wrong? Where is the failures? Where is what he didn't understand? And when you see that as an observation, you can say, okay, here are the endpoints of is where psychology, the theory ends, and here's where observation begins. And this is what we're doing here, but you can't do it within 10, 15 minute chunks. You know, we can't do the whole thing in 10, 15 minute chunks. This research, and, and research in general, takes years. And just to bring out the beginnings of this, the, the, the introduction of this, it's going to take a couple months. So unless you're prepared to sort of sit back for a couple months and sort of watch us and interact, and you know, there's no problem, you can interact, you can ask questions, you can question things, right? You can, you know, if you don't understand something or disagree with something, no problem, it, you know, say it. If you want to do it in the uh, YouTube way and leave a video comment, that's no problem because the comments are open. You can comment as much as you want. The only comments that will be deleted in terms of the video comments is if you spam, if, if you're advertising another channel or, or so on and so forth, uh, and it's a long thing, you know, 30 second, a 30 second ad for your channel, no problem. Uh, anything longer than 30 seconds is going to get deleted. Uh, but <laughs> um, basically, you can the comments are open. And this is an open place. This is an open place for discussion. It's an open forum. So I hope uh, to see more more discussion here. I hope to see uh, more views here. And if you like this, comment, rate, and subscribe. That's the standard YouTube thing. <laughs> uh, and that way, this, that way, the discussion will be seen more. All right. Bye bye. Democratic Earth.